You're listening to the Codependent Millennial Podcast with Sophie Shilo, episode 22, Money and Codependency. Before we begin our episode today, I want to share with you an incredible message that I received from an amazing client of mine. Olin sent me this message earlier this week, and I cannot not share it with you. Here's what Olin had to say about our work together. Sophie, I want you to know that I instinctively looked into one of my favorite mirrors and began talking to myself today. I saw radiating joy and creativity and raw power. Working with you for only a month has me feeling so much stronger and actually confident in my abilities to take care of myself and create the life I want. Coaching and helping others is so obviously what you are meant to be doing in this life right now, hands down. You change lives by acting as a mirror that shows people their full potential. Our work has been no exception for this. I continue to grow each day. (sighs) Thank you so much, Olin. You really are doing incredible work. Um, I just appreciate this message so much. Thank you. I also want to let all of you know who are listening that I'm hosting a free codependency cure challenge on Instagram beginning on July 27th, and you can sign up for it at the link in the show notes. You can also visit my Instagram profile and find the sign up link in my bio there. The challenge will be five powerful days of action that will help you move beyond the codependent behaviors that we all struggle with the most. People pleasing, boundary issues, confidence, decision making and so, so, so much more. There will also be an epic giveaway with free one-on-one coaching with me, a gorgeous journal, crystals from my absolute favorite crystal shop, and so much more. You guys, this challenge is gonna be amazing. I want you to sign up now. Go to the link in the show notes or my Instagram bio and join me. Okay, so let's dive in. Today's episode is a compilation of trainings that I did on Instagram all about money. There are four trainings in total that you're about to hear, and the last one is a question and answer session that addresses some fantastic questions that you all submitted for me to answer on Instagram. You're going to come away from this episode feeling so much more in control of your financial situation and really knowing and being able to step into your true power around money. Enjoy! Today we're talking about the intersections of these two things. In what ways are money and codependency related? So I'm here to talk about this. We're gonna talk about two ways that money and codependency are related in this video. When we are codependent, we often don't believe that what is ours is actually ours. And we have a really hard time accepting that what is someone else's is someone else's. So here's what I mean by this. A lot of times when we are codependent, we don't feel as if we have a right to say no. We don't feel as if we have a right to deny someone else's request when they ask for access to our time, our body, our money, our energy, our expertise, our physical property, our possessions, um, time with us. All of these things are within our sphere of ownership especially our body and our time and our energy um, and our thoughts and our minds. But a lot of times when we have been in codependent patterns in various relationships, it is really hard to stand firm in that knowing that those things are ours and that we don't owe them to anyone else ever for any reason. Not parents, not siblings, not teachers, not partners, not mentors, not mentees, not students, none of it. Those things belong to you. And this is extremely difficult as codependents to say no, to put up boundaries around either your physical property, your physical person, around your time, around your energy, around your money, all of this, it's very challenging. So I want you to know that One intersection of money and codependency is not feeling like you have the right to your own money. Not feeling like you have the right to say no if someone asks you to use your money. This can come up in so many different scenarios. I'm sure you might be thinking of a scenario right now where you don't feel entitled to what is yours. 
either you know physically or financially. Um, we also have a really hard time, like I said earlier, accepting that something that belongs to someone else belongs to them and that they won't give it to us. So one codependent pattern is to make it mean that we are not loved when someone else has boundaries with us. So if someone else has boundaries around their own money or time or physical body or resources or whatever, because it applies to all things, if someone has boundaries around that, that exclude us and that disallow us from accessing those resources, including you know their finances or their time or their energy, we will make that mean that they don't care about us, that we aren't worthy of time, money, love, energy, attention, um, that we are unlovable, that we just aren't good enough. We'll use their boundaries as reinforcement of our own limiting beliefs about ourselves. And this is such a crime. It's super unfair to the person who has the boundaries because they're allowed to have boundaries around what belongs to them. That's their right. And it's really unfair to us because it further reinforces the beliefs that we have about ourselves that are creating pain for us in the first place. The beliefs that we are unworthy, we are undeserving, we are unlovable, those are so painful and will never produce anything desirable in our lives. So by us using these neutral circumstances, other people's boundaries as evidence of those harmful beliefs is completely us doing a disservice to ourselves. So let's talk about the second way that money and codependency are related. We also, as codependents, have the tendency to use various ploys, various manipulation tactics to keep people around in our lives because we don't think that we'll be okay without them. I'll give you an example. Last week we spoke about self-neglect and one of the ways in which I discussed how self-neglect might manifest in your life is when you decide to overstep your own boundaries in the effort, in the service of keeping someone around in your life, attempting to keep someone around in your life that you don't think you'll be able to be okay without. And this exact same pattern comes into play when we're talking about using money as a way to maintain a codependent connection with someone or letting someone else use money to maintain a codependent connection with us. It's there are two sides of the same coin. I'll talk about both. So one way that we might use money in a codependent relationship is to convince someone through financial support to continue filling some sort of need, emotional need that we have. And instead of exploring ways of nurturing a more interdependent relationship by helping that other person or encouraging that other person to become more financially independent, we will relish the fact that they depend financially on us and we will use that as a way to continue to manipulate them to treat us however we want to be treated um, in exchange for us continuing financial support to that person. Super codependent, super messed up. If you are doing this right now, if you are in this situation right now, no judgment, no shame. I just want you to invite some compassionate awareness around it. You have to have the compassion piece because without that, it's just hiding in the darkness in shame. With the compassion, you can bring this tendency out into the light and say, what is happening here? Why am I doing this? What am I thinking that would cause me to take this action? That is the most important question you could ask yourself right now in this moment if this is something you're experiencing. So this also goes the other way around, allowing ourselves to rely unhealthily on someone else financially for one of several reasons. Number one, we are too scared that making money and becoming financially independent will alienate others and will cause them to either leave or distance themselves from us in some way and we have the belief that we won't be able to survive without them. Survive, you know, that word has many definitions in this context. Um, we are afraid that if we become financially independent or start to make more money that that will garner 
criticism or attention, maybe negative attention, unwanted attention. Um, we also are afraid sometimes that if we start to become financially independent or earn more money, that this will encourage dependence on us from others. We don't want to have this cycle repeated. And the most important thing I wanna say here is that this cycle can't repeat if you don't let it repeat. This cycle is only possible, it's only sustainable if you maintain weak boundaries. Someone else relying on you financially is only possible when your financial boundaries are weak. And that is codependency. A codependent relationship is only possible when you are there for it. A codependent relationship is only possible, codependent dynamics in a relationship are only possible when you allow them to continue, when you actively decide to participate in them, or when you decide to not opt out of them. Again, two sides of the same coin. So I hope this video did a good job of explaining to you the intersections of money and codependency in a very simple, very basic foundational way. If you resent someone for having money, it's because you've decided that you can't have that and that they are therefore deserving of resentment from you. This is huge. I want to say that again because I want everyone to hear it twice. We resent people to the extent that we give them control over our emotional well well-being. We resent people to the extent that we've given them our personal power. And so if you are resentful towards someone because they have more money than you, it's because you have put your emotional well-being and perhaps even your belief in your ability to earn the kind of money you want to earn, you've made that contingent upon them and what they're doing and how much money they have. You've put yourself in this completely powerless position and that's why you resent them. You don't resent them because they're worthy of resentment. You don't resent them because they're bad people. You don't resent them because they spurned you by having more money than you in the first place that has nothing to do with you. You only resent them because that is something you are withholding from yourself. You only resent them because you have trouble believing that that's possible for you too and you're angry about it. You resent them because you don't believe that that's possible for you. You resent them because you don't know how to believe that it's possible for you. You resent them because you feel bad for wanting it. So I just want to invite you to be really aware this week about your judgments of yourself for wanting peace of mind around money, for wanting abundance around money, for wanting more money. What are the judgments you have around yourself in this area? Are they serving you? And how are they serving you? What purpose are they serving in your life? And what might you want to call in instead? What beliefs around money, what judgments of yourself around money might you want to cultivate instead that would serve you more in your life? Um, thank you, Irina. I'm glad you like the wings. Um, so, so answer all of those questions. I encourage you to get out a pen and paper or to type them in a Google Doc, somewhere where you can really engage with these questions because this is an extremely important topic that affects all of us, again, in this capitalist society where money does equal security, safety, all of those things to a certain extent. Okay, I love you all so much. I hope you have an amazing night. This um, video will live on IGTV forever and ever and ever. And I will be back tomorrow with our third lesson on money and codependency. If you're watching this and you have questions about money and codependency, how those two intertwine, um, your own issues with money, just DM me and I will answer all of those questions during our Q&A session on Friday. If you're watching this after Friday, July the 10th, um, DM me anyways and we can talk. I cannot wait to connect and I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Hello, my loves. Welcome to day three of my series on money and codependency. Today we're talking all about how your aversion to people thinking that you're bad is preventing you from making money, from having money, from experiencing the kind of abundance that you want to experience. Your aversion to anyone thinking negative thoughts about you, which is a codependent behavior, is preventing you from making, having, enjoying more money. 
in your business, if you own a business, um, your aversion to people thinking negative thoughts about you is producing a, an action of hiding. It means that you are not fully showing up in your business the way you need to in order to make the kind of money you want to make. In your job, your aversion to people thinking negative thoughts about you is not actually contributing to you doing a better job at work. It's preventing you from taking initiative, which is how you make more money in a salaried position, which is how you make more money when you don't quote unquote, control your paycheck. And I want to really emphasize this because as codependents, hiding has been a survival tactic that we've used for a long time. And it helped us at one point when we were very young, hiding was how we got by in, in many instances. And just like any maladaptive coping mechanism at this point in our lives, Hiding is no longer beneficial, it is detrimental to us. You cannot make more money by hiding. You will not make money if you do not take initiative. So those two behaviors that stem from the aversion to people potentially thinking negative thoughts about you are behaviors that will prevent you from enjoying the kind of wealth you want to enjoy. I will read a few sentences. There is there's one thing I wanted to come back to that I'll remember in a minute. You can't make money by wishing you didn't want money or by judging yourself for wanting it. You won't make money with a belief that who you are and what you bring to the world is not valuable or important or worthy. You won't make money if you are unwilling to put yourself in situations where you are guaranteed to face rejection because you know that you'll be cruel to yourself on the other side. Do you understand that? Do you understand that your treatment of yourself after you experience judgment or rejection from others determines your orientation towards situations where you stand to be judged by others? Situations where you stand to be judged by others include every single situation that you will ever experience here on earth, period. What I wanted to say earlier, I just remembered it and I'll come back to it now. I wanted to say that as codependents, it was, it, it always has been sort of a safe haven in our minds to delude ourselves into thinking or believing that we have any control over anyone's emotions, that we have any control over anyone's perception of us, over anyone's opinion of us. And the truth is that we never do. We never have, we never will ever, we never ever do. And so the aversion to, the aversion that we have to really allowing other people to have their own thoughts and emotions about us, about the world, about themselves, is holding us back in every area, not just financially. It will hold you back in relationships as well because you will constantly be trying to manipulate someone else's thoughts and feelings because you don't feel comfortable letting them, letting them have their own thoughts and feelings, which they will anyways. That's the thing. We think we can control them. We think, well, if I tinker here and tinker there, then they'll think positively about me. Then they'll think negatively or about someone else, you know then I'll be able to control it. It's never true. So I want you to get out a piece of paper and a writing utensil that you love because I have a really incredible exercise that will be in extremely lucrative for you if you engage with it thoroughly. So prepare your piece of paper, get your little writing utensil, have a glass of water, let's get started. The first question, is what are the top 10 thoughts you have about yourself? <sighs> List out the top 10 thoughts that you have about yourself on the paper. Don't try to give them a positive spin. Don't try to give them a negative spin. What are the top 10 thoughts you have about yourself? The 10 most common thoughts you think about yourself. 
the ten most common feelings you feel towards yourself and the thoughts that cause those feelings. Just give me a top ten. And you can press pause on this video if you'd like. The second question is, well, first I'll say the reason why I ask that, the reason why that question is important in a financial context is because I promise you, I guarantee you that those thoughts about yourself are manifesting in your financial reality. The thoughts that you have about yourself, the, the dominant thoughts and feelings that you have towards yourself are creating your financial experience in this moment. And you can change your financial reality by deciding to think thoughts about yourself that are different, that are more empowering, that are more value creating. And you can change your financial status, you know, to the negative if you are unconscious about your thoughts and you get swept under to believe really degrading, really devaluing, really dismissive thoughts about yourself. So the next question is, what does your financial life look like? Get specific. Don't, don't fall into really interpretive language here. Just get really basic. Like exactly how much money is in your checking account, exactly how much money is in your savings account. Do you have investments of any kind? Do you have an IRA? Do you have a 401k? Um, do you have any CDs? Like just get your financial picture down on paper and get really crystal clear about it. Try to attach as little judgment as possible. I know that's hard, but if we can just stick to the facts, the very like factual mathematical numbers, that will help. So what does your financial life look like? And then the third question is, what thoughts do you think are contributing to this? What thoughts are you thinking that are creating this financial picture? What thoughts are you thinking about yourself, about money, about the world, about your job, about your business, about time, about energy, about exhaustion, about fear, about judgment? What thoughts are you thinking that are creating this current financial reality that you have? And the fourth question would be, well, I guess there will be five questions. The fourth question is, what do you want your financial reality to be? What do you want it to look like? And again, get really specific here. You can fold feelings into this question. I do invite you to bring some emotion, some passion to this question because answering this question is really exciting if you think about what is truly possible for you. So get specific about exactly how much money you want in your checking, exactly how much money you'd like in your savings, exactly how much money you'd like in your emergency account, separate account, exactly how much money you'd like in a retirement account, exactly how much money you'd like in a vacation account. Just get really, really crystal clear about all of those things and think about how that might feel. Just get excited about it. And then question number five is what thoughts would be necessary for you to think in order to create that financial reality? What thoughts would you have to start thinking in order to show up in a way in the world that would be conducive to you achieving and realizing that financial picture? In addition, Bonus question, a little sidebar to this, which is just as important by the way, maybe even more so. What thoughts would you have to stop thinking in order to achieve this financial reality that you just wrote down that you wanted? What thoughts do you have to stop thinking in order to create that financial reality? I would suggest any thoughts that are degrading, any thoughts that are 
hopeless, any thoughts that feel low, that feel like hiding, any thoughts that feel like shame, those are the thoughts you want to question and that you want to have a conscious uncoupling with in order to achieve your financial goals. So I hope this video was helpful. Again, this exercise, I promise you, will be incredibly lucrative for you. It has been for me. If you engage with it thoroughly, if you really take time to answer these questions, not only to answer these questions, but also to actually do the very intricate work of changing your thoughts so that your experience in life can change because that's how it happens, my friends. I love all of you so much. Um, I will be going live tomorrow afternoon for our Q&A on money and codependency. So if you're watching this and you haven't yet submitted a question for me to answer all about money and codependency or just money in general, submit now. Send me a DM with your question about money and codependency so that I can answer it on tomorrow's Q&A. Um, I will mention, if this work is work that you know you need to do, if you have codependent tendencies that you know are preventing you from living the life you want, again, send me a DM, let's talk. My program might be a perfect fit for you, might be exactly what you need to move beyond these codependent tendencies that are preventing you from getting everything that you've been saying you want for so long. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow. I cannot wait and I hope you have a beautiful evening. Goodbye. Welcome to this week's question and answer session all about money and codependency. Today we're going to be discussing four different topics. I received a bunch of questions from you guys that were amazing but so many of them were um, so similar that I decided to sort of take pieces of a lot of them and combine them into four categories because no surprise here a lot of you had very similar questions about the intersections of money and codependency and how to let go of our codependent ten tendencies around money and build healthier more robust relationships with money hey allison happy friday i miss you so let's get started question number one I used to pay for my ex's life. I was so codependent. I would always pick men that need fixing. They would have mommy and daddy issues, both. Uh, they would need to be taken care of, etc. Um, or I would need to, yeah, so that I would be the savior and fix them. Um, I would buy them food. I would show up ready to take care of them. And then it just builds from there. I know I get it from my parents. They were super generous, but to a ridiculous level. So I know it was learned. I'm taking a step back now, not dating, and looking at my patterns, trying to come to terms with my codependent behavior. Okay, incredible question. Thank you so much for submitting. Um, I read this one pretty much verbatim, but a lot of other people submitted something similar. They are drawn to the same type of relationships, drawn to men with the same kind of quote unquote issues, or just the same elements keep showing up in their relationships time and time again. So let's discuss this. Um, I want to ask you, if you can relate to this, how is it serving you to do this? How is it serving you to behave this way in relationships? How is it serving you to over caretake, to overcompensate? What do you allow yourself to think and feel about yourself when you take care of someone in this way? That's really, really important. I'm going to ask this in a different way. What do you allow yourself to feel and think about yourself, to think and feel about yourself when you take care of someone in this way? So usually what I see happen is people will try to really, really caretake someone, try to fix someone, try to save someone because they are only able to think certain positive thoughts about themselves if they have quote unquote saved someone or if they have filled a certain role in someone's life. So if this sounds like something that's happening for you, just dive a little deeper, do a little journaling session about this. What is going on there? 
What is the thought in your mind that drives you to want to be everything to everyone or just to be everything to one specific person? Often when we have this pattern of people pleasing and caretaking and codependency, we will project all of those needs onto one person and that person could be our alcoholic mother, it could be our boyfriend, it could be our depressed best friend, it, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. We can have this pattern with many different people in many different circumstances. Um, this pattern can even apply to a wide group of people. Maybe you feel um, like you want to save a certain subset of the population, either in your own city or in your country or somewhere in the world. It doesn't matter. The pattern is the same. So examine that. What thoughts are you only allowing yourself to think about yourself if you save this person or if you fulfill this need for this person? Okay. We know that, okay, so that's one section. Let's talk about the thing about your parents. We know that nothing from our past affects us today apart from the thoughts we are thinking about it, about, apart from how we're still keeping those cycles alive and active with our thinking. So what did you learn in your childhood about generosity, about caretaking, about giving, about people who don't do these things, etc.? What did you learn about women who aren't obsessed with caretaking? That's a really important question that I want you to ask. If you were raised and socialized as a woman in Western society or really anywhere in the world, um, it's likely that you internalized lots of thoughts and beliefs and feelings about yourself in relation to others in the context of caretaking. As women, um, as people who are socialized as women, as people who are raised as women, we do place a lot of our self-worth on whether or not we are caretaking, on our abilities to caretake, on whether or not we are successful at fixing or saving or helping. Um, Raven, you are my fucking life. I love you so much. Hello. I'm talking about something very interesting right now. Um, okay. So that is my suggestion suggestion to you, wonderful writer, um, and to anyone else who has who, who notices similar caretaking behaviors in their romantic relationships. Go listen back to this, do those journaling questions, dive in there, and as always, DM me if you have any questions about it. Happy to chat with you. So, uh, next question. And again, this is a conglomerate. I had several different people reach out to me with this same sentiment. Um, they're all business owners, so if you are a business owner, listen up. She said, I have a fear of sharing my prices because I want to people please so badly. I just want to people please and make potential clients want to work with me. Okay, good. So, pretty much what people were writing to me about was either their prices of their products, of physical products, or their services. Um, I had three different coaches reach out to me and ask about this. They just don't really feel comfortable talking about price with clients, with potential clients, with people who inquire about prices, whatever. So I wanna ask you, what are the thoughts you're thinking about yourself that make you feel squeamish about your prices? What are the thoughts you're thinking about the work that you do or the product that you sell that make you feel uncomfortable? that make you doubt the value of it, that make you think that other people will be unhappy when they learn what the price is. That is gonna be the most valuable question you can ask yourself. Then once you have the answer to that, you can say, okay, what do I think about this thought? Do I like this thought? Have I really ever looked at this thought? Have I looked at this thought in the face? Do I know, have I observed the effects that this thought are having in my life? A lot of times when we are able to look at the effect that a thought has in our life, we don't even, it's so repellent to us, it's so like disgusting, we like don't ever want to think that thought again, so we don't. 
but you can't get there unless you look at the thoughts. So what are you thinking about yourself that is making you so squeamish about your prices? What are your thoughts about money that are making you squeamish about your prices? If you have a, and this is like such a buzzword, so I don't even really want to use it, but um, I'm going to because it's in the common vernacular. Um, if you have a lack-based mentality that says that money is finite, that money is limited, that money is scarce, you will absolutely have trouble talking about your prices, no matter how high or low they might be, because you'll feel as if you, by selling your products or services, are taking money away from someone, or you'll feel as if um, you'll doubt why someone would ever want to spend their money on your product or service when they could do so many other things with it. That is an attitude towards money and towards selling that comes from the lie that, um, that there is a very scarce amount of money, that there was a very limited amount of money, and that you have to be really careful to not take up too much of it. Okay, so I know this is what we're all taught. I know that in capitalism, especially growing up in a capitalist society, that is what we are trained to believe about money, but I promise you this isn't true. So let me offer you a really helpful thought that you can use when you are either discussing your prices with clients or when you are pricing your physical products, if you sell physical or digital products online, it doesn't matter. This will work either way. The thought, and there will be many thoughts because you know how I like to go on rants, but the thoughts that I want to offer you are this. By selling my product or my service or whatever, um, I am contributing to the buyer's life. Money is infinite. <laughs> I don't know everything. I never know the value that what I bring to the world will bring into someone else's life. I am not responsible for my customer's financial situation. I can model financial abundance to others. I am always taken care of. I always have more than enough. There always is more than enough. These are just a few thoughts that you can think, and I want to emphasize here that these sound like affirmations that you might be suggested to say as part of like a money mantra, but if they don't ring true to you, saying them will feel so in contrast with your current beliefs that it will actually have a negative effect on you. So if you had issue with anything that I just said, examine why. Explore why, explore what in you doubted anything that I just said, anything about your value, anything about the value of your product or your service, um, because those were all abundant thoughts that I just listed and it would behoove you to examine the thoughts that you have that are in contrast with those abundant thoughts. We all have thoughts in contrast to abundance, that's why none of us are like whatever, like enlightened. Um, but if you don't like the way that your life looks ne like now, it is in your best interest to look at what thoughts you have that are in direct contrast with abundant thoughts. Okay, again, if you need help with this, if this doesn't make any sense to you, just send me a DM, we can talk about it there, let me know. Next question, the next theme was about, um, okay, well, I'll just read it. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone else might relate to this, but for instance, I'm still in school, I have a job, but school is more important to me right now. When I'm in school, I just work to have just enough money for bills and a little spending, not too focused on saving a lot right now. Sometimes I find it hard when getting into a relationship with someone who is done with school and has been saving for years and is ready to go with life. I think to myself, what if they think I'm lazy for not being at the same spot in life, money-wise, for the age that I am? Okay, so my first question is, are you happy with that? Are you satisfied? Um, are you satisfied with 
quote unquote, just making enough money to pay bills. Um, is that what you want? Or are you, do you want more and you're holding yourself back from that? Are you just deciding ahead of time what is or isn't possible for you? If so, I want to invite you to question that. You might have a belief that says that all that's available to you right now is just getting by, is just paying your bills, and you might have plenty of evidence that you've collected over the years for that. You might have a belief system that supports that, but I promise you it doesn't have to be that way if you don't want it to be that way. If you want to be in school and also um, building your financial independence, your, you know, financial well-being, you can absolutely be doing that. I promise you, I don't want you to limit yourself in that way. So that's number one, had to get that out of the way. That was just something that I caught. And uh, the second point I wanna discuss, you're concerned that they will think that you are lazy <laughs> or unsuccessful because those are judgments that you have about yourself. And I'm like, why? Why have those judgments about yourself? Why do you think that you're lazy for not being farther along in life than you currently are? Why are you making the circumstances in your life mean negative things about you? Why does your definition of success not include what you are currently doing in your life? So why have you decided that your current life circumstance makes you lazy, unsuccessful, a failure, anything like that. <laughs> Raven, I love you. I'm glad that you are agreeing. Um, glad you're in agreement with this. Um, to the person who asked this specific question and to all the other people who submitted questions that were similar about how other people perceive them, about other people judging them for being lazy or, or unsuccessful, really get clear on the thoughts you're thinking about yourself that make you feel bad or ashamed or unaccomplished or inadequate because what's interesting is those thoughts aren't encouraging you to climb the ladder, whatever, that was gross. Um, I hate that term. Those thoughts aren't encouraging you to achieve more, to pursue your goals. Those thoughts actually serve to just keep you stuck, to keep you so ashamed and so small and, and so embarrassed about yourself. So I just wanna say, you can define success however you want to. And you can choose to think thoughts about yourself that make you feel successful, that make you feel accomplished, that make you feel really positive about where you are in your life right now and what you're doing. And those thoughts will be more conducive to you going on and doing bigger, better things than thoughts that say, I'm not good enough, this isn't good enough, where I am isn't good enough. Um, again, those are all lack thoughts. And lack-based thoughts, lack mentality, never leads to abundance. So you might as well think really abundant, really supportive, really loving thoughts about yourself. You have nothing to lose by doing so and everything to gain. Listen to me, okay? You have everything to gain by thinking incredible, supportive, loving, encouraging positive thoughts about yourself. Something you can do, a tool that, um, that I used with one of my clients, she has a grandson and we were, we were talking about the ways in which she talks to herself and the sort of standards that she holds for herself um, around acceptability, around lovability and I said you would never ever put those conditions on your grandson why are you doing that to yourself so for you I mean just think of a very young child that you really love a whole lot it doesn't have to be a young child I'm thinking of my younger sister and she's in her 20s she's not a super baby but I love her um, think about someone you love very much maybe they're a toddler maybe they're a 29 year old I don't know and Think, think about the thoughts you're currently thinking about yourself. I'm lazy, I'm unaccomplished, I should be farther along in life. Would you ever, would those thoughts ever enter your mind about that person? Probably not, probably not. You would probably celebrate them just unequivocally, 
ugly. Um, you would probably celebrate them happily, no matter what was going on in their life. You would be encouraging to them. You would be supportive of them. You would never be tearing them down. You would never be using all these little like pieces of evidence to sort of build a case against them, build a case for the fact that they were lazy. Like you would not do that for that person that you love so much. So please love yourself enough to not do it for you, okay? And the last thing I wanna say in this live is, <laughs> Raven, I love you. Raven said, ha ha ha, I'm screaming yes to all of this. Oh, Raven, I just wanna scream with you all the time, I miss you. So, okay, good, love you, bye baby. Um, okay, this next one is something that I have discussed with several people over the last couple of weeks. Um, like I said, a lot of you guys who wrote in about money and codependency are business owners. And I hear this from you guys all the time. Um, two people that express these same sentiments are in salaried positions. They're not entrepreneurs. Um, but by the way, even if you're not an entrepreneur, you can still have an entrepreneurial mindset in your job, which is incredible. We can talk about that later. Uh, if you have questions about that, just DM me. So the basic sentiment is, I don't know anything about business. I don't know how to make money. I don't know anything. And people literally will say this outright. Like they'll just state those things as facts. They'll say, I don't know anything about business. I don't know how to make money. I don't know anything. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're so lax about the thoughts that you entertain in your mind that those get through the door? Those pass muster? What? Look at the ramifications of those thoughts in your business and in your life. I don't know anything about business. I don't know how to make money. I don't know anything. How do those thoughts make you feel? Probably like shit. Probably inadequate. Probably really confused probably dependent on others for answers about your business or your life, probably a little sad, uh, probably really discouraged, worried, anxious, afraid. What actions do all of those feelings inspire? What actions are driven by the emotions of fear, anxiety, indecision, confusion, inadequacy, sadness? Actions like hiding, actions like thinking, you know, well, I probably just shouldn't bother. I won't bother. Actions of not bothering. Uh, actions of quote unquote not bothering people because you think that you're bothering people when you either sell or when you advertise or anything, when you show up at all. I've been there. Raise your hand if you feel like a burden for just existing sometimes. Yes, hello codependency. Um, and what results do those actions create? What results are created in your business when you're hiding? What results are created in your business when you're afraid to bother people? What results are created in your business when your perception of your business is that it is bothering people? It's never good. The result is never lots of money. <laughs> and this is true in salaried positions as well, or hourly work. When you are thinking thoughts that make you feel sad, small, like hiding, confused, you don't take initiative in your job. You don't show up in a really meaningful way ready to contribute. You just don't. And so you do block yourself from opportunities that might present themselves to make more money that would present themselves to someone who was taking more initiative and who really believed in the value that they had to bring. So I want you to really truly understand the ramifications, the consequences of the painful, negative, discouraging thoughts that you're just letting in your mind. Like, are you just letting anyone walk in that door? Um, 
look, look those consequences in the face. <laughs> That's what I wrote. Look those consequences in the face. Like really come to terms with that and just be like, yeah, I'm not willing to live like that anymore. I'm not willing to let these unconscious negative thoughts and beliefs just decide what's possible for me and my business and my life anymore. I'm just not. So the next part is super, super valuable. Again, I suggest that you go back and watch the last three IGTV videos all about money and codependency for more super lucrative exercises, um, thought exercises. But this one is the fourth. Add this to the list. So sit down with a laptop and some notes or a pen and paper, whatever works for you, but please do this exercise. Please, please, I promise you it will serve you and it will make you money, okay? All right, question number one. What will you have to do in order to make the money you want? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really sure. No, not allowed. I don't know is no longer an option, okay? We don't say that anymore. We don't say I don't know ever again, especially not when it comes to your business, especially not when it comes to your life, especially not when it comes to your money. I don't know isn't allowed. So what will you have to do in order to make the money you want? There could be options. You could fill up an entire page of options. There have been times in my life where I had to make a lot of money that I didn't have to pay for things that I really needed. And I just got really stupidly creative. No option was off the table, none. So don't tell yourself that you don't know because you do. And you block your own knowing when you tell yourself the lie that you don't know. So stop believing that lie, just stop it. It's not doing anything for you. Imagine what might be possible for you if you stopped telling yourself that lie. I'll give you a hint. You would find the answer to the question, how could I make more money? I want you to also get super specific, like exactly how much money do you want to make? Like, how could I make an extra $200 this month? How can I make an extra $500 this month? Get really specific so that your brain doesn't have the opportunity to slip into like vagueness and I don't know and well, I could do that next month. Like I could, sure, I could make $1,000 in, in September. It's like, yeah, but can you make 500 in July extra? Okay, second question. How would you have to feel in order to do this? The this being those things that we listed in number one. How would you have to feel in order to give it a try. How would you have to feel in order to go down that list of possibilities um, and, and just try them? How would you have to feel to do that until you made your $500? Hmm. You can close your eyes here and take a deep breath and really feel in your body what you would have to be feeling in order to inspire that action. in order to inspire it in the first place, in order to maintain it, in order to sustain that action until your goal was reached. No stopping. No saying, well, it's been four weeks and I didn't make the 500, so I give up. What would you have to feel in order to not give up? Isn't that fun to think about? And then the next question is, what would you have to think, know, and believe in order to feel that way? What would you have to think, know, and believe about yourself, about money, about the world, about other people in order to feel the feelings you would have to feel in order to take the action you needed to take in order to create the result that you want in your life? You have so much more power than you actually know. And that just makes me so happy to think about. <laughs> I seriously love talking about this with people. When they're like, when like they open their eyes and they're like, wow, I really do have so much more power than I ever realized before. So your homework today, my sweet loves, is to find your money thoughts. Because right now, 
you might be thinking some thoughts that are not money thoughts. You might be thinking, <laughs> I had a session with a client today. <laughs> she was like, those are garbage thoughts. I was like, yes, they are. So you might be thinking garbage thoughts right now. And it's funny because she has a six figure business. She has a six figure business, you guys, but she's thinking garbage thoughts. She's working on her money thoughts. Multiple six figures, here she comes. So what are your money thoughts? What are the thoughts you need to think that will produce the feeling that you need in order to take the action that you need to take in order to create, produce the result that you want in your life? Yes, this applies to money, but it also applies to everything else, okay? I love you so much. If you have any questions about anything in this live, you can just send me a DM and we can discuss it further. If this is work that you know you need to be doing, again, send me a DM. We can talk about what one-on-one work, one -on -one work looks like. Um, this is what we do. I just rip out all the thoughts in your brain that are producing negative results in your life. We look at them hard. We rebuild new ones and we help you create the life that you want to be living. It's really hard to do that when you're thinking thoughts that are directly in the way of that, that you don't even recognize because they've been thoughts you might be thinking for your whole life. Um, it's hard to identify problematic thoughts when you just think they're facts. <sighs> I think this was my favorite live that I've ever done. This was a blast. I also want to let you know, this is very exciting. This is the first time I'm announcing it here. I will be running a free challenge here on Instagram in a week and a half, uh, a little less in like nine days. Um, and I want you to participate. It is going to be an incredible free challenge where we will cure codependency five days of intense codependency cure work. I cannot wait to see you there. If you have questions about it, again, send me a DM, but I'll be disseminating all the information about this in the next couple of days. So stay tuned this weekend for all of those details. Um, and until then, I hope you have an amazing Friday evening. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon, bye. And that's a wrap. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I so hope this episode served you. Go back and listen to it again, especially if you didn't have a pen and paper with you the first time around. The exercises and the reflective questions that I posed to you in this episode will completely shift your relationship around money in the best way. If you're ready to take this work even deeper and apply it in your own life in a permanent and meaningful way, join my free five-day codependency cure challenge today. You will be a changed woman at the end of our five days together, I promise you. Visit the link in my bio to sign up and start winning points for the giveaway right now. I'll see you inside. If you liked what you heard in this episode, join me over on Instagram at codependentmillennial for more tips on how to move beyond codependency and build a life that you truly love.